Hey, BRB TV, man, we live out here, my nigga. You feel me? One of my motherfucking niggas yeah, down there, man. what, 15, 20 years since we you was since we was shorties, my nigga. Been real. One of the real ones. Since you hear me? day one. Since day one. You hear me? Been real. Been real television. You hear me? Welcome to my hood. It's the first of the uh, series we got coming. Finna just, you know, take y'all around Kenosha, Kenosha, Wisconsin, the K, whatever you want to call it. Show y'all, man, how a motherfucker grew up, like, show up and show what's, up. Really, what's really going on out here in these streets, my nigga. Like, yeah. this, this right here, I grew up on this block. This 61st. Next block, 62nd. Like, these, these, some of the, these is the worst blocks in the city. You hear me? And that's why I grew up. So we finna, we finna get this little vlog and shit started. Letting y'all know what it is and where we at and what the fuck going on and what's been going on. You feel me? Let you know some of the history behind myself and my people. And, and just everything, you hear me? All right. Been real, man. Tom Cole, Stunner. Yeah. I'm talking about been real bullies, run it up a pair. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, Check my yeah. man's out, man. Love. Native language to label LLC. Man, let them know. know. Rep your shit. Check him out, PD Bay Beauty, Precious. You know what I'm talking about? Check your boy out, Tom Cole, man. Stay fresh, baby. Love, my nigga. Love, my dude. All right, baby. See y'all yeah, later. You got a link. Yeah, for sure. Link. Shit, just call me. You got my number now. I, yeah. Hot as ever, boy. <laughs> Say that I love you If I didn't, darling, I'm sorry Mama's schizophrenic, daddy up in prison If the boy commits sins, Lord, please forgive him I could have got a sentence for all the crimes I committed I spit a whole sentence, but I didn't leave a period Fucking bad bitches, and she say she on her period Fuck a bad bitch, and all she said was period I must be talking to myself, cause she act like I'm delirious Should've named me George, cause I'm so damn curious Getting to the Oh, y'all knew I was over here, huh? Y'all like, oh, you got a style to see this shit What's going on, bitch? Oh, yeah, you already know Fuckin' with my people, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, you already know 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 Oh, yeah, you Send somebody in the dead of some sand. You understand? Yeah. Facts. Facts. I ain't playing. Facts. Facts. Oh. Oh. Fuck, I get out on that bitch. Well, God. I get out on that bitch. Yeah. Facts. We live out here, man. This shit ain't. This shit ain't scripted. It ain't no characters. You hear me? This is my real life. Like I done grew up right here. All this shit. We in uptown. You feel me? Southside, you know? Whatever you want to call it, you hear me? I roamed these streets since I was, you feel me? This hot. You know, I didn't caught all my first cases. Fuck my first, some of my first bitches. Everything around here, my nigga, like, it's the way it like around here, like, this alley infamous, all this. We right here, Uptown Pantry. You feel me? One of the first souls we was coming to a shorty like, motherfucker go ahead. And just cause they know who you is, you ain't gotta be 18 to get, you feel me, grown up products. Just cause off the track, we've been, we was in this motherfucker head single day. Knew the owners, they sold it, not to some new people, but you feel me like, this is everything we was living. You feel me like, you can see. They had uh, last summer, they had, uh, the police had shot Jacob Blake. And uh, so then we had all the big ass riots and shit. So it was like people from all 50 states was coming out here rioting, marching for peace and justice and shit like that. You feel me? This was some of the aftermath. And that was shit over a year ago. You feel me? It was a little worse than this. They had things boarded up. And then, you know, they had the community come out and, uh, you know, do little murals and, and paintings and shit, as you can see on the wall. Uptown Beauty shit and Uptown Restaurant. The motherfuckers been there shit as long as I can remember before all that happened. And, you know, like some of my first vlogs I had shot right here on these blocks. We was walking through and, and Uptown Beauty, they had always supported us and they always kept it real with us. You feel me? But shit, we gonna slide back this way. We gonna start this motherfucker off back on 61st. 
and we're gonna walk all the way down 61st and I'm gonna just give y'all a little history of the shit I've been through and, and some of the shit I know about even if I wasn't there for it you feel me and then we're gonna bend back up around 60 seconds Back live, you hear me on 61st. You feel me? Just give y'all a little tour around and uh, show y'all what's going on. This used to be the spot here. Yeah, most of these spots. My cousin stayed right here. You see him? My auntie stayed right here. In the back of here. You see him? This apartment right here. Me and bro. Me and Money, my brother, y'all know me, y'all know me and my brother Money, so this is auntie crib right here. You feel me? As you can see, all this shit boarded up. They got the crib boarded up and shit now, but like, this was one of the main spots, like, as far as everything, like, we'd just be out here kicking it, hustling, everything you could think of, fighting, all that shit that happened right here, shootings, all kind of shit, like, and we was sleeping right here. You feel me? I, I was staying with a motherfucker, like, with, uh, with the fam and shit, and some shit had happened and I was back out here shit fucked up, homeless and shit. I was sleeping in my car type shit like, but bro gave me a place to stay. He like, shit, it ain't my shit, but it's OG shit. Like, and he let me come stay. So we was sleeping in this motherfucker on the floor together. Cold as hell, the, the motherfucker, it was the winter time. So the wind blowing under the door, nigga, it's zero degrees outside. Me and bro, you feel me? We, we just manned that shit out. You feel me? We, we sat there, nigga, we made plans like my nigga like, this can't be life, you feel me? Motherfucker out here broke, fucked up, you feel me? Nowhere to really go. Ain't really have too much of a vision of what we wanted to do, but like this is one of the first places it started. Like, bro, we gotta we gotta change our life and, and get somewhere and get something. You feel me? We sleeping on the floor at Auntie Crib and shit. It's like, man, motherfucker gotta get up and do better for themselves, you feel me? Right here, bro, like. They killed my brother right here. My brother Rondo, long live number six. You feel me? This just happened January of this year. You feel me? He was uh he was walking from the store and shit. Some niggas pulled up on him and and they ain't even know my brother. Like, you feel me? And they, they killed him right here in this grass that we that we walking on, we stepping on right here. You feel me? The people here, they got a camera on their crib, bro. They had caught all the shit on camera, bro. So it was kind of fucked up, like you know, seeing your brother die on tape and you know, for the whole the whole world to see type shit. So yeah, that shit was crazy, man. Long live number six, you hear me forever after six up. Yeah. yeah, we lived in this crib, bro. Them heads stay right here on the uh, on the side of this spot. A lot of shit happened when we was living right there too, like it's been uh like 61st has just always been like the main strip for uh, my family and shit like because what that's one two three and then shit as i take y'all down the block y'all gonna see like uh we didn't live in like shit like damn there are 10 houses on this block as far as my family go like like you can see through the uh through the little alleyway right here we gonna uh walk down that's 62nd but that's my granny crib i, I shot a, a couple videos over here you feel me? But once we get back around, y'all will be able to see that. Right here, my cousin Two Baby stayed right here. He uh he passed away in uh, April of this year. You feel me? So in the first like the first three four months out this year, I lost between uh, both sides, all sides of my family. I lost like four people in the fo first four months of this year. And Cuz stayed right here. Like they killed bro right here, and Cuz was staying right here and shit. You know. And uh, shit, that shit was like a hard pill to swallow though. Like, them was two niggas like, when I first was rapping and shit and I first like uh, started doing the clothing brands and shit, they was two of the main niggas that really supported me. Like, even if we ain't see each other every day, we ain't kick it every day and whatnot, them niggas would just hit me like, boy, keep going. Or they hit me like, man, let me get a shirt. Or Rondo would hit me like, big bro, man, you ain't been dropping no music, boy, yo ass bullshit. I need some new shit to put on my phone. and. And, and you feel me play on my YouTube and shit, you know, so that shit was like, that shit was like, damn, the beginning of the year, I, I'm losing all my, a lot of the realest niggas I didn't, I didn't came up around, you know, and that shit, that shit was a hard pill to swallow, like I said, though, you feel me, like, these blocks, like, it, it get treacherous, like, you would think, because you from a smaller city and motherfuckers don't know your city, they, 
they in no Chicago or they in no Milwaukee or something, but like we in Kenosha, Wisconsin, my nigga. So motherfuckers be like, well, what the fuck is that at? Like, not knowing that shit really go on around here. You feel me? Like, it ain't the worst place to live, but it definitely ain't the best place to be living. You feel me? Shit, matter of fact, we stayed in this crib too. I forgot. On the uh, on the front side of this building, we stayed in there, uh, auntie and uh, bro. You feel me? We stayed in this spot right here, my cousin uh, Straw now. I think they had two cribs in here. Her shit was uh, through the back door and up the stairs and shit. A lot of shit happened right here. Kenosha, Wisconsin, you hear me? That's where I'm from. Basically, my hometown. You know, I was born in Chicago and shit. Like, I, I actually lived in Cabrini Green. Like, at that time, when I, around when I lived there and I was born, that was one of the, it was like the worst housing project in the, in the country or the world at that time. You know, and shit. Stayed in Gary, Indiana. Did a little short stints there. I got a lot of family out there and shit. And then, shit, I was like, I want to say five, maybe six or something. And my mama had uh, moved us out here to the K. We were staying on the, uh, on the north side. When we do the part two of the welcome to my hood or whatever, uh, I'm going to go through all like, the dirty thirties and shit in uh, the building where I had first moved when I had came out here. I think that was on like 45th Street and shit. You feel me? But So yeah, I basically grew up here on Kenosha. Like, this is my city. I done did a lot here. You feel me? Been through a lot here. And shit, you know, this just home. Like, if all this fails, I know shit, I can come back to the K. And shit, it's all love. And I know, I just know how to get to it. Like, I know the streets, like the back of my hand around here. Taking y'all a little further down the block now. We on 18th. Finna take y'all down all the way, uh, to 14th and then we're going to come back around through uh, 62nd and then show y'all the block. Got a lot of history on 62nd too. Shit, my nigga, like, word from the rise, my nigga, like, don't never give up. Like, motherfucker done been in some of the worst positions and in some of the best positions, you feel me? And every time, you feel me, the way you be thinking about it, it might not, it might not pan out how you, how you envisioned it to, but it's like, shit, that's why you got to keep going, you hear me? Because every day is a, it's a new journey. Every day, motherfucker learning something new, finding something out. You might meet a new person that might that might be the person you needed to meet to uh, help change your life, to take you out of uh, the environment that you in. You feel me? Cause sometimes it be the environment too, like it'll have you, it'll have you doing shit you might not ever see yourself doing. You feel what I'm saying? And we had to go through a lot of shit that shit, you know, it'd be unexpected, you know? But it's like shit, that next day, that next week, that next month, something happened. Shit, as long as you stand focused, that shit could change your life, my nigga. Like, and I'm living proof, like, I done been through, like I said, the worst and the best. So me, my niggas, all my brothers, been real brothers, like, that's the fam, like, you know, and we didn't, we didn't see so much shit and, and did so much and, and shit, like, it just be crazy, like, damn, this my, is this my cousin coming up the block right now, like, we just be out here, like, living life. And this is one of my brother, like, this my blood cousin, and this was my brother, like, his best man before he passed away, so that shit hit home with him, too, like, Love the fuck out this nigga, like, what's happening? Now. What y'all? Shit, walking up the strip. Hell yeah, good <laughs> to see you, my nigga. 
Oh, love. love, bro. Yo, Chong, you cold and you good? Yeah, yeah. We got mama too. Shit, we uh, we doing a welcome to my hood vlog. I'm taking them uh, all the way down 61st, and then we finna come back up 62nd. Shit. I'm like, still walking through you this know, shit with y'all. Come on. Bro. You already know. <laughs> Let them know who you is. Oh, shout out BRB, you know what I'm saying? I'm designer, you feel me? Yeah, yeah. You know, I be on the strip a lot, you know what I'm saying? Walking through here, seeing the little kids and shit, looking out for them. Good. What's happening, folks? Yeah, we out here on the block, though. This is my spot right here. Them paint on them bitches? Yeah, these are uh, the paintballs, paintbrushes. Oh, them bitches nasty. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this is my spot right here. I stayed in here damn near a year. When I was, uh, I had my first baby and shit. You feel me, my baby, all Marie? We was living in this crib right here, up the stairs and shit. And it was shit, it was a lot going on, like, you feel me, it was shit. That was a trying time, like, that's when I really, that's when I really stepped my grind up and my hustle and shit up, because it was like, damn, I got my first baby on the way, and I ain't even, I ain't even close to where I want to be at. I don't even think, I ain't feel like I was ready to have no baby and shit at that time, but shit. This crib right here, that's when I really got up off my ass and applied, and applied all Fresh. the pressure. Yeah, yeah, hold oh, on, on, shit, we shit. Feel me right here. That's another one of the cribs we, we was in. He had to make shit happen as young boy. We was like, I want to say 14, 15. We was just doing a lot of fighting and everything you could think of, bro. We was doing that shit, bro. You feel me? That was one of the main spots. That's my shit. Man, this one, I've been playing this one a lot. Blowing back, folks. It made me think about a lot of shit, but I want to remix this bitch though. <laughs> Cause you know my LA shit I made, that shit go hard too. I was like, I cause my, my, my first start off was like, shit, I need like a start off to go hard with. Yeah. So I was like, shit, you know, you, you ever seen the yellow fin? Like a bird? Oh, fat? No, -uh, no, it's like a yellow fin. No, no. It's like a woodpecker bone. Yeah. Hell I yeah, I was like, like, I was like, I was like, uh, then it pet, I wish you would, try to pull it, then it pet, I wish you would, cause I'm too bad. Right here. You see shit, like, it's all love, we done walked down the whole block, damn there no air body, well most of the people, you feel me, motherfuckers know, like, bro, like, we done been on these blocks so long, it's like shit, you know, we just grow up, and you know, you know everything and everybody. What's wrong, dude, you good? One of the original, one of the original guys, been real brothers, you hear me? Hey. Live out here, that's 61st and uh, 14th, you feel me? Like this house right here, this set the tone for a lot of shit. You feel me? My auntie, uh, my auntie Shane Bang stayed right here. Dink, Mac, you hear me? Yells. Everybody like this house right here. Like when a lot of shit like this, shit was already real. But we was getting older, like so we kind of basically like grew up in this house. Like this where everybody came to kick it. Everybody just came to meet up, like if you know if all else fails, like nigga, cause we was young, so we riding bikes, all kind of shit. This before motherfuckers could get their license, anything. So like, you know, if all else fails, is you in there where and you ain't find nobody, like you can pull up right here and the guy's gonna be here, somebody gonna be here, some gonna be happening. If you was fucked up, like shit, you just pull up right here, shit. You ain't got no couple of dollars, you shit. You already know one of the guys gonna be here, blow a blunt with you, or, or whatever the case may be, like. We was real tight knit right here. Like a lot of structure and a lot of you feel me, a lot of character got built in this house. Like you feel me, like we done did a lot. Like I remember uh I had we had uh whooped this dude on the north side and shit. And uh the next morning shit, I'm on I'm on the bus on my way to school. And motherfuckers just called me like shit, uh bro and them just went to jail, like three of my brothers said went to jail and shit about that shit. Why well, I ain't they, I ain't even know it was about the fight. You feel me? Well, I, that's what I was assuming and shit. So I come, drop my shit off, 
over here. You feel me? And I uh, make it to school. I had the little shorty holding my weed and shit for me. A motherfucker end up telling on her. And uh, they end up telling on her or whatever because they had one in her bag or whatever and sent the little weed. And you know, in school, they had the little thing like if uh, if you snitch on a motherfucker, they, the police and shit, they'll give you like $100 or something if the person get caught. So motherfucker sent my shit in her bag and, and went and told on her. But I had already went and got it back from her type shit. So they uh they came to uh they came to my classroom and uh they sent the security to come get me. So I'm getting up and shit, getting ready to go to the office because I'm like, well shit, I ain't got shit on me. Ain't nothing they can do to me. But as I'm as I'm getting up and following him, he, he, the security tell me like he see my jacket and shit in my bag I had left it in the, uh at the desk or whatever. So he like uh he like nah he like uh grab all that, you gonna need all that. And once he told me that, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm going to jail. So we leave out the classroom. I'm following him. He uh he go up the stairs. Like in the school, I went to uh to Ruther, uh Ruther uh Central High School and shit. It's an alternative school and shit. It's like for you know, like uh, it was it was for pregnant girls and, and and kids and shit that was like in trouble with schoolwork or just in trouble outside of school and shit like that. So, uh, like, if you've been a Ruther, then you know how the stairs go. It's like a big, wide stairway in the middle, and then it's like two small ones on the side. So, Vern, if y'all know Vern, he used to be the security up there. He was going up the main stairwell, and I, I was just, like, lollygagging behind him, just letting him, let him get in the little head start. As soon as he got about halfway up, I cut down the, uh, the small stairway, jumped the whole stairs, boom. Hit the stair, then boom, like... And then you get to the main stairway with uh, the main entrance at with everybody coming in. So at this time, one of the other programs was coming in. So it's like 50, 100 students coming in the building. And I didn't just took off. So over the, uh, they yelling over the walkie talkies. He's running, the suspect is running the shit. I hit the main stairway. I got like halfway down and then just jumped and bust through the doors and shit. I flew out the front door and then shit, I ran from Ruther all the way over here and shit in between that nigga like, I'm like, shit, I'm on the run now, so I'm, I got an uh, academic jacket. That shit was busting at the time, so I had the reversible one. I flipped my jacket inside out, tossed my book bag on the inside of my jacket, and shit, I took off. Ran past the police, but they probably couldn't even tell who I was and whatnot, because I had switched my shit, and I ran right here. I was on the run for like five days or something, and everybody looking for me and shit, and I'm just hiding out. And shit, I was shit on the run, and I'm thinking like, damn, I'm finna go to fucking jail and shit. And it just so happened, like my auntie had called, like they wasn't even looking for me for what I thought they was looking for me for. They was looking for me for the weed. You feel me? And I thought, uh, I thought shit, they was finna take me to jail over us whooping dude and shit. And he had told nigga snitched on shit. Everybody basically. But when he told, he gave him my name, but he didn't know my last name, so he gave him my dad name. So they was looking for me under another name that wasn't mine. So that's how I ended up not even getting caught up in that case and shit. But I had ran here for like five days and then my auntie was like, yeah, they looking for you for some weed and shit. And I'm like, oh, well, I ain't get caught with the weed and shit. So that's when I stopped running. I just, I went to the school and shit. And then they had sent the, uh, I went back to school like on a Monday. And then they sent, instead of sending security this time, they sent the police in to come get me. And, uh. Yeah, they just took me up there and, and let me know what was going on, and then they just suspended me for a whole another week. And then, shit, that was basically it on that note, but it just be like, shit was just so crazy at that time. We was doing so much shit back to back, it's like shit. Every single day, we was either running from the police or, you feel me, or shit, I was getting suspended. Like, I ended up graduating from Ruther, but before that, I had got expelled from Indian Trail. That was like my first high school. That was like an academy school. Where, we was just doing so much shit, bro, like, I don't even know, like, I could go on all day. We didn't have to do 100 episodes to just give you the full history, but as you can see, though, they been tearing all this shit down, like, the alley was getting bad, it was raggedy, you feel me, all kind of shit, bro, but, like, right here, this motherfucker really made us, like, we done did some of the worst shit right here, and made, a, made some money right here, all kind of shit, like, through this alley, like, and we finna go all the way through, so y'all can see it, shit. Uh, yeah, this gas station right here, 
it played like this gas station played a major role in my life. You feel me? It used to be a little different. It was gates and shit up, and then it used to be a little cut over here. Those things were cut up. I remember one day when uh, they had first invented camera phones and shit. We was out here and shit. There was a dude sitting back here. It used to be like dusty as hell back here, and there was like a whole bunch of crates and shit. He was sitting back here talking shit to us. And uh, so yeah, he was sitting basically right here with these little crates up. He was saying we was walking through, he was talking shit or whatever. I don't know what the man said, but shit, we we ended up whooping him. When my one of my guys, he was recording him and shit. He was like the first one out of us with the uh with the phone with the camera on it and shit. My nigga came up, but he was sitting right here. And then he came up, then he kicked him. Nigga like Jackie Chan or Jet Lee or something, his ass flew off the crates, then we ended we ended up whooping him. That shit was crazy. This gas station right here though, like, I caught my first, my first real case in like, I done had got little tickets and shit like that before, little warnings and shit, but I actually caught my first case at this gas station right here. You feel me, as you can see shit, you see what it looked like now, it's boarded up and shit. Motherfucker, uh, motherfucker need to put in an fire and see if they want for this motherfucker. But shit, like, long story short, me and, uh, me and Money, we was coming from, uh, like, uh, we was coming from this way and whatnot. We had bustle and move, trying to get some money and shit. And then we had, uh, we had scraped up a few dollars and grabbed a weed. So we had came right here to, uh, get some wraps. We was like, I think I'm gonna say 15 or 16. So depending on who was in the gas station, they wouldn't let us buy the wraps. Like Rooster, he was one of the main dudes. He had let us get them because he knew us, but whoever was in here that day, he wasn't going. So I had the lady uh, get us some swishers or whatever. And then I walked out the gas station. And uh, as I walked out, I was holding the door open like this. She handed me the wraps. As soon as I turned around, the police was already like, this is one of the hot spots, so they was already, they just be walking through this area. Like they got a little task force in there where they just walk through and shit. So they was posted up here on the side of the building. So as I'm grabbing the wraps from her and turning around, he was already damn near standing right here. And then he just snatched my arm and grabbed me like, yeah, you feel me? Cause it's illegal or whatever. So he snatched me up and grabbed me, put me up on the wall and shit. They end up giving her a ticket and they pulled me to the side and start searching me. And then shit, I had all the weed on me bagged up. And uh, yeah, that was my first case. They hit me with a uh, possession and then possession with intent to deliver. Cause I had like 10 bags, like back then, motherfuckers was selling like nicks and dabs and shit. So I had like 10 saw bucks or something on me. Uh, some Reggie, <laughs> some Reggie at that. You hear me? So yeah, they booked me for that shit. And yeah, that was my first little major, uh, my first little major case and shit. I ended up, I think I ended up like pleading out to some misdemeanors and shit. Like misdemeanor or just possession or some shit. I had fought that shit for like a couple months, a year or something. But yeah, this was one of the, the main spots like where shit, we was making a lot of money just hustling and trapping, posting up outside of here, kicking it, just kicking it like, cause as you can see, this is the main strip 60. And shit, you see the whole little hood. So everybody from right over here coming right here. So shit, you catch a motherfucker all day right here. And then shit, we used to post that right here for the rain and all that shit. But, they had, uh, I think when the, uh, the Jacob Blake situation had happened, they had, this was one of the spots too, they tore this motherfucker down, went inside and stole everything, all that shit, you know, and shit, I guess they never recovered from that shit.